Hi there. Thanks for visiting our poster and taking a photo of the QR code to watch this video presentation. My name is Matthew. I'm really sorry that I can't be there in person to explain this exciting new technique and our study findings to you, so I hope you find this video useful. Before jumping into the technique and the study findings, let me share with you a little bit of background information. So, endometriosis is a very common, benign gynecological problem that has a chronic nature. Most of the individuals who experience endometriosis experience it in the form of pain with their periods, pain with intercourse, pain with bowel movements, and infertility. In addition to ovarian endometriomas and deep endometriosis, a third phenotype exists. This is called superficial endometriosis. Superficial endometriosis is very small. It generally lines the peritoneum, the ovaries, the back of the uterus, and these lesions are so small that we are as yet unable to reliably visualize them on ultrasound or MRI. That means that we continue to rely on diagnostic laparoscopy. Now, this is an invasive way for us to diagnose endometriosis, whereby a patient has to go to sleep, we have to insert a laparoscope into the abdomen and visualize the disease and biopsy the disease. This brings us to our procedure, which we call saline infusion sonopodography, or SPG for short. This novel ultrasound technique involves infusing fluid into the pouch of Douglas, POD, via the uterus and the fallopian tubes when they are patent. Once the fluid is settled into the pouch of Douglas, we have a brand new acoustic window that provides enhanced contrast between the tissues in the pelvis. When we started to perform saline infusion sonopodography more routinely, the first thing that we recognized was our enhanced ability to understand anatomical landmarks. Let's look at figure A. Here you can see a black band. This represents the muscularis propria of the rectum. This is a common site of deep endometriosis. Just on top of the rectum sits the rectovaginal septum, which is a potential space. In figure A, you cannot really appreciate where the rectovaginal septum ends and the intraabdominal contents begin. In contrast, figure B depicts saline infusion sonopodography, whereby fluid is distending the pouch of Douglas, and you can actually see the very base of the pouch of Douglas. Right next to the base of the pouch of Douglas is exactly where the end of the rectovaginal septum is. The rectovaginal septum continues uh, until you reach the anal verge in that direction. This is very important because this allows for specific landmarking of endometriosis to the spaces such as the rectovaginal septum or the pouch of Douglas peritoneum or the vagina. Similarly, in figure C, we're visualizing the left uterus sacral ligament. That is this white band structure just here. This is adjacent to the vagina as well as the intra-abdominal contents. It's sort of squished between the two. It's not particularly clear where the uterus sacral ligament begins and ends, and the contours of the uterus sacral ligament are also not clear. However, when there is fluid in the pouch of Douglas induced by SPG, you can indeed see the, these structures much more clearly. You can see the contour of the left uterus sacral ligament just here, attaching at the site of the uterus and attaching here at the sacrum. And you can actually see the plane uh, of tissue just there. The next thing we noticed, thanks to SPG, was that we could appreciate the regularity or irregularity of the peritoneum when fluid was present. As you can see here in figure A, this is the peritoneum of the pouch of Douglas. And here you have the peritoneum overlying the anterior rectum. This peritoneum is very smooth. In contrast, figures B, C, and D all depict irregularities of this peritoneum in the pouch of Douglas. At each of the arrows, you can see irregularities, either an area of thickening with some hypoechoic change, hyperechoic projections coming off of the peritoneum, small cystic areas. In addition, we have filmy adhesions off of the peritoneum and peritoneal pockets with incomplete septations. 
We recruited consecutive patients with signs and symptoms of endometriosis who were planned for laparoscopic surgery. At the time of laparoscopic surgery, Professor George Condis acted as the reference standard for all sites of endometriosis. At the beginning of the surgery, all sites of disease were mapped. Then, surgery was paused and all of the gas in the abdomen was emptied. This allowed us to perform the saline infusion zone of pedography. The operator for saline infusion zone of pedography was blinded to all of the operative findings, so was not aware of the various sites of superficial endometriosis or if there were any sites at all. At the conclusion of SPG, all sites of superficial endometriosis were documented. These were then compared against the reference standard diagnosis in terms of diagnostic performance. We assessed accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, positive and negative predictive value, positive and negative likelihood ratios. At the time of the abstract submission, 19 patients had undergone SPG, 15 of which had successful SPG. As you can see, 79% of patients had endometriosis overall, and 74% of patients had superficial endometriosis. Generally, SPG was unsuccessful in those that had obliteration of their pouch of Douglas. In this table, I'd first like to highlight that the prevalence of pouch of Douglas superficial endometriosis amongst those with superficial endometriosis was 90%. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to the sensitivity of 89% for SPG in the detection of superficial endometriosis of the pouch of Douglas. In all cases of superficial endometriosis, the specificity of SPG was 100%, indicating that there were no false positives. To conclude, we believe that superficial endometriosis can be seen on ultrasound using saline infusion somapodography. This is, of course, the pilot study for the larger study that is ongoing. If the results of the larger study support the pilot study findings, this could be a game changer for the diagnosis of endometriosis. Thanks for watching. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions.